may shock you to hear this, but professional wrestling, especially as it pertains to WWE, is a cosmetic business and looks are important. That does not just mean pretty faces and tight bodies, but the overall physical presentation of a wrestler, including, importantly, their costume. A wrestler's ring attire can do wonders for a career and can quickly become part of the iconography of a character. Think of the Ultimate Warrior and Randy Savage and all of their neon extravagance, or conversely, the Undertaker's almost exclusively black garments. It's clearly a crucial part of the package and can go some way to determining a wrestler's fate. Dress for the job you want, not the job you have and all that. Which in this case I suppose means you better put on those yellow and red trunks, brother! Sometimes wrestlers, who, let's face it, are not exactly well known for their fashion sense, will get it horribly wrong, either via their own design or with something that is given to them by management. Usually, ring gear looks somewhere between spectacular and nondescript, but often there are tights, boots, singlets, vests, and trunks that would take 10 Trini and Susannas to sort out. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 worst WWE wrestler attires ever. Join us! Number 10, Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder rightfully gets a lot of credit for the way in which he managed to get himself over via the internet and social media at a time when wrestlers simply weren't taking full advantage of things like YouTube and Twitter. Fans wondered why WWE wasn't utilizing Long Island IC at the time, but I think I have a theory. I assume the powers that be purposely removed Ryder from television because they simply got sick of having to watch him wrestle in these. Are you serious, bro? What the hell are they supposed to be anyway? They were half long tights, half trunks, and usually came in little used colors like sparkly purple, orange, and peach. I appreciate trying to stand out and catch people's eyes, but what is the deal with there only being one leg to those things? Did the seamstress hand him a half-finished pair of long tights one day and young Zack thought, well, that looks pretty cool? Is his left thigh simply that much more impressive than his right and he just wants to show it off? Did Candice Michelle leave her suitcase unattended one night and Ryder had first dibs? Seriously, the man was wearing these monstrosities while battling the likes of Christian over the ECW title, for God's sake. Number 9, Shawn Michaels. When your nicknames are the heartbreak kid and sexy boy, you're bound to wear some eye-grabbing garb, aren't you? Shawn Michaels was the premier showman between the ropes during his mid-90s pomp, but he knew that to be a big star, you needed more than just incredible work rates. You needed to look like a star, too. And Shawn's shiny heart-adorned tights and entrance gear, which included everything from leather chaps to vests emblazoned with mirrors and intricate beadwork, certainly made him stand out. But we're not here to talk about those, even though whether or not you like that look will definitely depend on your individual taste, because they absolutely fit the character. No, we are here to talk about whatever the hell HBK was wearing at the 2002 Survivor Series. In only his second match back after coming out of retirement, Michael showed up for his big world heavyweight title win in Madison Square Garden in the first ever Elimination Chamber wearing half-finished poop-colored pants and cowboy boots. According to the man himself, he had put in a request for some new gear but did so too late and this is what the WWE seamstress had time to do. Capping off this wonderful presentation was black knee pads worn outside of his tights and a little Dutch boy haircut. Number 8, Rey Mysterio. As well as being one of the most innovative and spectacular wrestlers ever, Ray Ray also has a reputation for having some of the best ring gear in the biz. The Masked Man must have spent a small fortune over the decades compiling his various outfits, which come in every shade and colour imaginable. Point is, Mysterio's gear in general has been top draw. However, there are, of course, some notable exceptions. Like this. Seriously, Ray, why did you go for peachy flesh-colored spandex with what looks like a black thong over the top? I get that you were mates with Rikishi back in the day, but this is a tribute too far. And what about this? The master of the 619 was trying to pay tribute to the Silver Surfer here, but it looks like he lost a fight with a can of paint. But that's not his only superhero or film-inspired faux pas, either. His WrestleMania 26 avatar getup was bungled, and his Survivor Series 2019 Joker guys had him looking like a teddy bear as he went into battle with Brock Lesnar. 
He has way more hits than misses, but when Ray gets it wrong, he really gets it wrong. Still, nothing in his WWE run has been quite as bad as when he went all horny in WCW's final days, the filthy little animal. Number 7. Jeff Jarrett when Jeff Jarrett came to WWE in the mid-90s, he did so not as a straight-up wrestler, but as a cocky kayfabe country music star who wanted to use the WWE platform to further his singing career. In early vignettes, we were exposed to the Nashvillian in his own element, and his attire was as ostentatious as you would expect it to be. So it shouldn't have come as too much of a surprise when he showed up for matches wearing this attention-getting ensemble. The outerwear itself was something else, replete with light-up cowboy hats, but when he whipped them off, fans were confronted with gear that was hideous even for the standards of the time. The colours and patterns, all typically garish, were bad enough, but the thing that made it all the worse was the multiple suspenders and choker attached to his tights. It didn't really make any sense and didn't promote the country music aspect of the gimmick at all, with his contemporaries, the Smoking Guns, looking more like honky-tonk superstars. Jarrett did dial it down in subsequent years, opting for a more basic colour scheme and style, but his was still amongst the worst looks in the industry, the Navajo jacket and singlet period not helping him out at all. Number 6. Brutus Beefcake It was the 80s is a fair enough excuse if you want an explanation for taking a load of cocaine or not paying your taxes, but I don't think it's good enough to justify Brutus the Barber Beefcake's WWE ring gear. And I mean all of it, because while many wrestlers who change their costumes often have the occasional shocker, old brother Bruti didn't have a single outfit that was easy on the eyes. Bizarre colour combinations, animal print, see-through, fringe, shredded, you name it, the beefster wore it and wore it badly. The man with the big scissors routinely looked as though he had accidentally taken them to his tights and other gear and often resulted in attire that showed a bit more skin than I would think was acceptable for PG-rated programming. Really, unless he made it himself, I can only assume that the barber's instructions to his costume maker was, find whatever cheap rubbish you can, put it together any way you want, and make sure there's a bit of thigh showing, yeah? And it didn't get better over time either, as Brutus was still wearing the same clobber in the 90s, unless he was teaming up with Buddy Hulk Hogan as the Mega Maniacs, in which case he blessed us with this terrifying concoction. Number 5. Dusty Rhodes Dusty Rhodes was never going to win any beauty contests, though I do believe he placed fifth in the 1983 Mr. Texas Pig Farmer competition, his popularity not coming from having a handsome face or a hulking physique. The American dream was homely and pudgy, but it didn't matter because he had overwhelming charisma and a genuine connection to the audience. As one of the top stars in the NWA slash WCW, Dusty kept it simple with black trunks and western style boots. When he went to WWE in the late 80s, however, Vince saw fit to put the son of a plumber in black and yellow polka dots. And why was this? Because F you Dusty Rhodes, that's why. Most close to the situation have gone on to say that it was likely a rib, a way of sticking it to Rhodes who was not just one of the competition's top stars, but also one of its bookers. This was also a case of McMahon trying to move away from a well-defined character and come up with an original creation of his own, but either way, the polka dots were a tragedy and immediately put a ceiling on Dusty's WWE aspirations. That said, he had the last laugh since he got over and enjoyed much success despite looking like Mr. Blobby. Number 4. The Artist Formerly Known as Gold Dust Of course, the tormenting of the Rhodes family didn't stop at Dusty, but extended to his son, Dustin Gold Dust Runnels, as well. The gold-covered androgynous bizarre one was a risk in and of itself and would have likely failed in the hands of a lesser performer. But Dustin threw himself into the role and put on the makeup and spandex suit and even wore women's lingerie at WrestleMania 12. Such was his dedication to making the character work. One incarnation of the character that totally bombed, though, was when he became the artist formerly known as Gold Dust. The artist formerly known as Gold Dust was an attempt to push the envelope during the height of the Attitude Era and is mostly remembered for producing some of the worst costumes ever seen on WWE TV. Honestly, take your pick with this lot because every single one was an abomination, an outrage against our beloved sports entertainment. Complemented by the equally weird Luna, Goldust and his outfits were usually a random hodgepodge of awful, but some weeks he went the impressionist route, which gave us his nightmare-inducing takes on Sable, Vader, and even his own father. It was different, it was over the top, and it's not something that you will hear Dustin Rhodes talking about with any great fondness. 
Number three, Giant Gonzalez. Some wrestlers have a killer look, but little talent. Others are full of talent, but have so-so looks. And then there is Giant Gonzalez, a man who combined a chronic lack of ability with one of the worst costumes ever. Gonzalez was very big and had some prior wrestling experience, though not a lot, and was brought into WWE to be an attraction. The Undertaker tasked with getting something out of him. While the matches were predictably rotten, I personally couldn't concentrate on the crap action that was taking place in the ring. And why is that? Because I couldn't take my eyes away from the giant's padded bodysuit. It was quite simply ghastly. Look at it. It had airbrushed muscles and was all sinewy and even had the wonderful detail of painted on pubes. A rather pitiful attempt to make up for the real man's frail body, the suit did more harm than good and just made what was supposed to be a formidable heel come across as a joke. There were a few different variations of the attire and each one of them was awful. Gonzalez was never going to stick around long term and basically only had his freakish size going for him, yet WWE somehow managed to make a distraction from the fact he was almost 8 foot tall. Which is almost commendable, in a way. Number 2, Mantar. A first ballot entry into the Bad Gimmick Hall of Fame, Mantar is a visual representation of WWE during its mid-90s nadir. The half-man, half-bull character was inspired by a creature from Greek mythology, but the actual reality was a generic-looking bloke in a costume that looked like someone's well-meaning but 100% blind nan had stitched together. The singlet, which morphed over time, was predominantly brown, which, as we saw with Shawn Michaels before, is probably the worst colour that wrestling gear can be. It was also an unflattering shape and sometimes had a cartoon cow's face on it just in case you didn't get what he was supposed to be. The worst part of the, I don't know, production was the giant bull's head that he would wear to the ring. The bull's head that looked like it came from your local carnival spooky house. The bull's head that apparently cost Vince McMahon an arm and a leg, or should that be a horn and a hoof? The bull's head that was so large and cumbersome that it wouldn't fit through the ring ropes and kept falling off poor old Mantar's actual human head. Lame, insulting, and poorly presented, Mantar was total and utter bull plop. Number 1, Bastian Booger. You would never guess it based on the character he portrayed in WWE, but Mike Shaw was actually a respected journeyman who had put on brilliant matches everywhere from Saskatoon to Mexico City before he became first Friar Ferguson and then Bastian Booger. As the Mad Monk, Shaw's body was concealed with a traditional robe, but as the slovenly booger, WWE decided that he needed to show as much skin as possible. And we would all like to say a hearty thank you to WWE for that one, because Bastion Booger's ring gear was an eyesore, a revealing grey singlet that was supposedly given to him as a punishment for his weight. Shaw himself didn't like the character or the outfit, and who can really blame him? He had to go out there gorging on disgusting, fatty foods while wearing what looked like little more than a few strips of electrical tape. Obviously, the idea here was to disgust, and on that front, mission accomplished. Booger was obese and hairy, and the outfit helped to accentuate all that was negative about his portly physique. But you know what? Fair play to him for giving it a go and going out on national TV dressed in something that would probably get you kicked out of an S&M convention, but just because he was brave doesn't make it in any way good.